Welcome to the CEO's Open Discussions Corner at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. My name is Michelle Holliday. Today, we are honored to be welcoming back to the show, Mr. Raina Vig. Raina is the founder and CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources, which is a minerals exploration company focused upon acquisition, exploration, and development of properties in the gold mining sector and other resources. Raina is an extremely skillful entrepreneur. He has over 30 years experience in launching explosively successful companies, a cannabis company called Cura Leaf, in which Raina took it public. And today it is a $12 billion company. So that just sets the stage for who you are. Raina, we are excited to welcome you back to the show. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. Wow. What, a, what an introduction. <laughs> Thank you. What a record. We are looking forward to your update on Blue Lagoon Resources. This is a spectacular company. and I've also heard that you've actually purchased more shares and you have not even started drilling yet. You, of course, are founder and CEO of this company. Raina, before we go into Blue Lagoon Resources, I want to get your take on something that's taking place across the world. And that, of course, is the economy. And I want to know if you are bullish right now on commodities. We have a lot of investors watching. And if you are bullish on commodities, what commodities would you choose right now? Well, I'm very uh, bullish uh, on commodities, uh, Michelle. And it's, it's, it's very simple. It's because, you know, uh, uh, mining is very cyclical. And when I entered the mining sector, you know, a little over 10 years ago, it was, it was on the down you know, turn. And it was uh, very, you know, brutal, actually, in, the, in, the, in those 10 years. But now it's all turning. And, and there's a number of reasons, uh, you know, why it's, 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 it's turning, uh, uh, both uh, gold and silver. And I'm also very bullish in copper. So if you look at gold, for example, look at all the money printing that's been uh, happening all around the world. And I know, you know, gold goes up and down and it pulls back and people get nervous. But that's trading. That's not investing, right? If you look at the long term chart of gold, uh, you know, if you go back 30, 35 years, 40 years, you know, pick a, pick, a, pick a year and you'll see, yes, it's gone up and down, but to the trajectory has always been up. And that's what you have to, to look at. And with all the money printing and the governments that are in debt right now, gold has nowhere but up to go. It's just a matter of time. You know, that's one. Copper is another one that's very exciting because of the electric car movement. Look what's happening here. You know, GM just a, a few weeks ago announced they're actually going to stop all production of gasoline and diesel engines here, you know, in the the next uh, 20 to 30 years and there's many other companies that are following that it takes four to five times more copper uh, in an electric car than it does in a normal car so you know that's driving it all the infrastructure uh, that's being announced right now around the world and in the, and the united states that requires a lot of copper so you know the gold the silver copper are three uh, in particular that i'm very very bullish on now your projects focus upon gold right do you expect copper and silver and other resources to be among that? Well, we actually have both gold and silver on our on our property, you know, on, on the main area where we're anticipating on getting into production here uh, in the near future. Um, but also we have another property right next door to our main property, which is a copper property, uh, you know, project. So we've got exposure to all three of those that I just talked about. Oh, man. That's so exciting because the green energy movement is really where it's at. Um, Gold and silver as financial commodities and investment resources are great. But copper, I want you to go into that just a little bit because, Raina, we are hearing about all kinds of plans. They aren't in motion yet. However, when we go to electric vehicles, the roads will actually contain copper in order for you to sort of regenerate your batteries as you're driving along. So there's all kinds of changes, including copper. Yeah, there's lots of innovation coming uh, and, and look at even with the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, they're looking at uh, making uh, countertops and, you know, uh, places where we touch uh, from copper because copper is resistant uh, to bacteria and viruses. So there's, lot, there's uh, many, many uses uh, that uh, copper has. And, and, and one of the other reasons why copper is hitting all time highs, it's come off a little bit in the last little bit, but, you know, still it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, been hitting all time highs. And what the other uh, 
reason is uh, the supply demand uh, you know curve. It takes uh, billions of dollars and 10 to 20 years to put a copper mine into production. These are big, big mega projects. So it's not something like to, you know tomorrow, next month or next year, you can just say, hey, let's just start another copper mine. It doesn't work that way. It takes a long time. So there's a lot of as supply continues to to uh, to go up, uh, you know, it's put, it's putting a lot of pressure, you know, on the uh, on the uh, on the uh, you know on that on that uh, on, on fulfilling that supply. So there's a tremendous uh, uh, amount of uh, copper that's uh, in demand currently, and it's going to be in demand here in the in the in the near future. And that only means one thing: that uh, copper is uh, is headed to the moon. This is so interesting because copper is so affordable in comparison to gold. You know. Silver, of course, is affordable, but copper is really affordable. So for investors out there, and also just what you mentioned, the groundwork that it takes to put a mine into motion, to even discover a copper mine first. First, you have to discover it and then put it into motion. So you are, this is amazing, right? Yeah, and, and, and most of the, uh, the, the low-hanging fruit, uh, you know, as they say, is gone. You know, the easy, easy pickings, the easy properties have been discovered. Uh, so it's getting, it's getting tougher and tougher. And that's another reason why, you know, the, the, uh, the price of copper is likely to rise because there's all these factors, you know, more, more difficult to find, uh, a lot of money required to put into production, the time required to put into production, the electric car movement, you know, the, all the infrastructures, the bridges, the buildings, you know, the role, all the construction that's, uh, uh, you know, your president is uh, announcing, uh, you know, a multi-trillion dollar budget for infrastructure. And uh, so all of these things are, are going to put pressure uh, on, on uh, supply and demand. And it's going to, uh, it's going to you know, naturally, the price is going to uh, increase, which is, which, is what we're, which is what we're already seeing. Yes, yes. I just wanted to ask you what the effect upon, um, you know, the governments and the central banks, you mentioned the printing. I mean, as a successful entrepreneur who is very good with money, it must be incredibly frustrating to watch something like this, to watch the governments throughout the world just haphazardly print their money. But the interesting aspect to this is this has a good, actually positive effect upon precious metals sector. Yeah, I mean, it's a uh, kind of the silver lining. It's an it's unfortunate, you know, governments around the world are all in trouble. They are they 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 don't they they are very short term thinkers. They're just interested in getting you know elected again. So uh, there's no option but that for them. Uh, it's not like they have a tremendous revenue from anywhere other than us. They keep taxing us. That's the only source of revenue they really have. So all they can do is print more money to pay for all the deficits that you know that they are that they're creating. And you're right. That the 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 uh, one of the positive side effects, I guess, if we can call it positive, is that uh, you know it keeps devaluing the currency, and unfortunately, everything becomes more expensive, including you know gold and silver. So it's not even so much that gold is going up; it's that the dollar is getting weaker and weaker. You know, if you look at uh, if you go back to time, and if we were in the seventies, you know, if you were to, if you were to take a, an ounce of, of gold back then, it was about thirty five dollars. You know, and if you were to bury that in your backyard and take a thirty five dollars cash at that time and put that in a bag and bury that next to it, come back fast forward now to twenty twenty one and and take it out. You know, that 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 same one piece of uh, that ounce of gold today is worth around 1800 that you paid $35 for. But what is the value of that $35, that paper currency, right? I mean, what, a, a burger or two and a coffee maybe? Right? I mean, you know, so the value of the yeah. currency has been depreciating over the years and the more money printing that takes place, the, 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 the worse and worse, you know, that it, it, it does for paper uh, currency for, the, for fiat money, as, the, as, as we call it, and the better it is for, for the precious metals. Rena, I love that analogy, that if you were to bury a piece of gold and bury $35 at the time they were equal, what are they today? Because that paints the perfect picture of exactly what's happening to precious metals and also to fiat. Now, you are an incredibly successful entrepreneur, as I mentioned at the top. You have taken several companies public over the past five years. Can you please detail those companies for us and give everyone an idea of your own personal business background? Sure. I mean, most of my life, I was in private industry. Uh, and then about uh, 10 years ago, I was invited to the capital markets. Uh, I was looking for a change and a very successful entrepreneur who's worth, you know, 
300 million plus a big venture capitalist. Uh, a friend of mine said, hey, get out of your private world and come into my exciting world of the capital market. So so I did. It wasn't such a great entry, by the way. You know, entrepreneurs, you know, for every success, you've got a few failures, too. And I've had my share. And when I when I joined uh, the capital markets, uh, I, I put all, a lot of money into the mining sector because that's where he had money, made most of his money. And the mining sector collapsed and uh, I lost all my money. So it was uh, quite the uh, quite the entry, but then uh, you know you kind of hang in there and you 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 learn and you 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 pivot and that's what I did. And then in 2018, uh, uh, I focused in on a on a, the hottest sector at the time, uh, which was cannabis. And I was very fortunate to find a, a, a company out of uh, the Boston area called Curaleaf, and I worked with them to take them public. And uh, of course, uh, that was the largest uh, cannabis uh, Canadian cannabis raise in in, in history. It was a 500. $20 million raise, nearly a, just under a $6 billion RTO. And today the company still trades at almost $12 billion. The stock's at about $18. So it's a, a you know huge success story and they're well on their way. It's an incredible management team and they've done a fantastic job on, on continuing to build that company. And then just to, uh, to, to prove it wasn't a fluke, I did a second one. In 2018, a company out of Arizona called Harvest Health and Recreation, uh, which was a $300 million raise and about a $2 billion RTO. That company actually just got sold three weeks ago uh, for $2.1 billion to a company called True Leave. And, uh, you know, stock's trading about $5. So, you know, those are great successes. And then in 2019, uh, I decided, uh, hey, metal, metals, uh, you know, mining has got to come back. It's been, you know, 10 years. So everyone thought I was crazy. And I laser beam focused on the uh, on the mining industry, and I, I launched this company, Blue Lagoon Resources, from scratch, with a with a focus on gold and silver, and 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 uh, and, uh, and and copper to uh, to acquire, and uh, that's what I've done. Uh, and I also took up another company, uh, 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 a copper company, focus company in Chile. Uh, I took them public about six months ago, and that's doing extremely well. So I'm just uh, you know I'm just a a, a crazy entrepreneur who <laughs> looks for opportunities. And uh, surround myself with the brightest, the, you know, the brightest people of that industry and, uh, and uh, help execute on a plan. Right. It has a lot to do with intuition. You have to admit that, you know, just your instinct on feeling the right time, the right business, when it's time to jump, especially for like with cannabis, because the right company is so important. As you mentioned, you know, it's uh, where's what? 12 billion right now, while other cannabis companies sort of, you know, is a big deal, you know, that they start to fall away. It has to do with the management, the intuition, right, of everyone behind it. Absolutely. You got to have great projects, but you also got to have, you know, great management who's been there and done that. And uh, for example, in this, in, in both in the, in the case of Cureleaf and Harvest, uh, you know, exceptional management teams, all successful in the past and their, their other, other ventures. And uh, that's what it takes. And, uh, and that's why I'm, uh, you, you asked earlier, you know, I've added to my personal position. Yes. Uh, uh, three or four months ago, I added another million shares to my personal position in Blue Lagoon Resources because I believe in, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, you know, I put in uh, a lot of money over half Million, about half a million dollars into this company, you know, so far, me and my family and, uh, and a handful of my friends have put in $2.2 million so far into Blue Lagoon Resources, you know, at much higher prices because p- before COVID, uh, you know, the stock was uh, much, much higher as many companies were, but that was, that's what happens, you know, it pulls back, but that's where the buying opportunity is. You see, most people, unfortunately, buy at the wrong time and sell at the wrong time. And, you know, so you look for dips when things go down. I'm excited. That's when I buy. You know, that's when you're when you're buying gold. Gold recently, not too long ago, dipped below 1700. I was a buyer, not a seller. You know, people panic. So, you know, so you look for good opportunities, good projects, good management teams who've done who've been there, done it before. And you uh, you jump in. You can't you can't make money or you can't win a game if you're not in, in, in the game. <laughs> you know, you've, got to, you've got to be invested. You've got to be you've got to be playing in the sector. And, uh, and only then can you win. Exactly. It's such a great point. I mean, don't panic when it dips. Be happy that it's not just, you know, going up, 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 you know, and you have the opportunity to step in and, and uh, pick up some more. I want to really start to break down Blue Lagoon Resources for everyone, Raina, because this is an amazing company. Now, the first time you were here, we talked about your flagship project, which is Dome Mountain, and you were just getting ready. And it's my understanding that you already have come so far that you're actually ready to start to drill. So this is an extremely exciting time. This is why you're here today to let everybody know we are right on the tip 
of everything. Please, um, for anyone that hasn't um, become familiar with your company yet, um, describe it to us. Uh, describe the project, um, how you acquired the project, because that's quite a story, and where you are right now. Give us the big picture. Sure. So, look, uh, we, you know, they say uh, some, once in a while you get lucky. And, you know, you, after we looked at, you know, I don't know, several dozens and dozens and maybe 100 projects, we found this one. And uh, so that's where we were, I, I say we're lucky, you know, in the, in the end. And, and really what happened was uh, this is a, the, the previous owners got uh, a little too old. You know, they're 83 years old and not in the best of health. And they just couldn't finish, uh, you know, executing to get and get into production. They had spent $28 million previously in the last dozen years on getting Getting this all, all in development and permitting and in my and uh, and infrastructure and only needed another two million dollars to finish it. So we came along, we picked it up about 14 months ago, and we've deployed the $2 million. We've done the amendment work. We're just at the final stages. In fact, just this week, the last piece of it was the water treatment uh, plant, and uh, that's being, uh, uh, the tests are being uh, are running as we speak, and they'll be complete uh, uh, next week. Uh, and then we'll take all that information and, and submit it to the, uh, to the government, and uh, in the next, uh, you know, they'll take three or four months. So later this year, we expect to be in a, in a position to, uh, to make a production des- decision. So that's how we acquired it, which was all cash. Uh, uh, zero cash, by the way, and all f- shares, which was a very aggressive deal that I was able to negotiate and great for our shareholders. Um, and then, yes, the drilling, that's how you really increase the market cap, really how you increase the value of a, of a, of a mining exploration company. So we announced a 20,000 meter drill program back in January. We, we, we did 7,700 of that uh, already. And we, uh, pause to you know take the data and analyze it and 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 and, and figure out where, where next we want to we, we want to go and uh, we're ready to go so uh, as of uh, earlier this week on on monday we uh, we uh, you know got the drill rig back on on site and, and we're uh, we're starting to drill uh, so it's very very exciting this is gonna be a very uh, busy uh, summer we have uh, 20 plus people working up there on the site right now and uh, there's a lot of activity so there'll be lots of news flow which is very important for mining exploration companies and public companies because you know that's how generally these companies appreciate because people want to be engaged they want to know what's going on they want to see results so touch you know touch wood so far so good and uh, and uh, we'll see uh, what uh, we believe that uh, we have a tremendous uh, amount of upside uh, in, in the near future oh yeah and it's all about timing getting in before that upside starts to strike which is right now you guys are in a just a plum spot for investors. Well, it's, to the, it's, it's the discovery curve, they call it in, in mining, right? So, you know, you, you look at it, you know, typically mining companies, you know, they'll be flat as they're looking at their projects and as they're deciding what to do, then they start drilling. And then there's a point where, it, it, you know, where it just turns. And, and that's that curve that I call the discovery curve. And then it just goes straight up. You know, if you're, if you're able to hit something and if you're able to successfully execute on the plan. So what you, where you want it, where investors want to be is just at that cut but that at that at right when it's about to be turning and, uh, of that discovery curve and generally that's what that's when companies are drilling and advancing their products and projects that's where you know typically where you where you want to take a look a serious look at the investing and that is now for you that's where we are right now <laughs> i just want to point that out it is right now please uh, mention your tickers and where you trade yeah, we trade in, in, in Canada and the United States and in Germany. So in Canada, we trade under the symbol uh, BLLG. Uh, in the U.S., we trade in, under the symbol BLAGF. And in Germany, we trade under 7BL. Okay. All right. Now, I understand that 90% of this project has never been drilled. So it's extraordinary. I mean, this is a true discovery process. Go into that just a little bit. When you drill, is that when you discover the deposits or do you drill after you know the deposits are there? What is actually the method, Reina? What's, what's a combination? You know, you, 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 you have, uh, you know, the, there's a, a lot of uh, uh, technical analysis that goes into it and a lot more smarter people than me do that. <laughs> You know, for us, uh, so there's a there's a number of uh, methods that they that, that they use to determine to look at these uh, these areas to see uh, what happened, you know, thousands of years ago in in these areas, and then they decide, okay, here's the path, and here's where we're, we're going to drill. They pick those targets based on their analysis that they do from the soils and from the geology.
technology and from the knowledge and the history of, of the area. And then you drill. And uh, drilling is the ultimate because, you know, un, you know, you can't see what's under the ground. You know, unfortunately, there's no, you know, uh, we don't have access to Superman as X-ray vision or we or the or the uh, or the uh, science has an advance to the point where you can actually see, you know, what's, what's happening. I mean, it's limited. You could you could fly what's called an airborne survey by, by helicopters. And and uh, it, it uh, if it uh, if it uh, uh, is kind of kind of lights up, uh, which means uh, if you see uh, it, uh, a lot of conductivity, uh, then they know something's going on there. So there's a lot of analysis that takes place and then you drill. And when you drill, you know, hopefully you hit and we've been hitting. It's, it's been fantastic, uh, uh, very high grade numbers. Uh, and if you continue to hit, you continue to expand your drill program. You continue to define that that uh, what you have, whether it's copper or silver or gold and increase your resource. So that's kind of a sort of a layman's uh, overview of how, that, how, how it works. That's what we need. The layman's overview of how it works. Now, you just mentioned something you've been hitting. What have you been hitting and what kind of deposits are there? It's gold and silver, you know, so we've been we've been drilling and we've been hitting some very, very nice high grade numbers anywhere from, you know, sort of 15 grams to 107 grams a ton, which is very, very high, you know, high, high grade and, uh, you know, an, an amazing silver number. So, you know, that's what it's all about uh, uh, is 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 kind of proving your your theory and very exciting you know earlier this week you know there was there's was more than 6000 tons of this mineralized material that's been sitting in the, in the mine for years and that we finally got permission to take out so earlier this week the trucks started rolling you know and uh, you know which was fantastic so those are that's actually material that's from the mine that's in the trucks to the mill they process it and uh, in uh, in about uh, two and a half three months you know Know, we should be generating, you know, probably 2,500 plus ounces of gold out of that, uh, plus a lot of silver. And that's, that does two things. A, it shows the market we're executing. I'm, I'm, you know, we're doing exactly what we're saying that we're going to be doing. Plus, it brings money back into, in, you know, into the coffers, into the treasury, right? So that we can take that back and redeploy it back into the ground. Wow. Wow. So just to, for everyone to understand, this is just not discovery. You're actually in gold production. Soon, very soon. We're not quite there yet, but we're we're headed that way. And certainly, we're going to take this material and we're going to we're going to get that processed, and then just continue to work on our amendment work. And we fully expect that uh, by the end of the year, we'll be in that position to to make that decision and uh, you know get going. This is such an interesting property because not only is it that um, discovered, not drilled, ninety percent of it. There's actually an, a mine sitting there that was already constructed you know what i mean you aren't really starting from the bottom up with just a wealth of deposits you have that yeah it's a it's a very unique project i'm the envy of a lot of my colleagues who say hey you're <laughs> going to have actually cash flowing here uh, in the near future which is very exciting uh, uh so it's you know you know it takes uh it takes 20 years to get a mining permit in british columbia <laughs> you know the average is 14 so you know, it's very valuable what we have. We have a already permitted mine that, you know, and then usually it takes millions and millions of dollars to put this into production. I was fortunate my predecessors already spent $28 million on this, you know, and we had to spend only a couple million, which, we, which we've already done. You know, we've got a healthy treasury. We still have a, a you know, very good healthy treasury, uh, lots of access to the capital. We have, we've got no debt. We've got about $5 million worth of warrants uh, that are in the money that are starting to come in. So, you know, those are all very, very, important things for, for, a, for a company and, and to manage it well so that we don't have to keep going into the market and diluting our shareholders. And now is the time. Raina, please go ahead and tell everybody um, where they can find out more about Blue Lagoon Resources. And also, please repeat your tickers one more time for everyone. Sure. I mean, the best places are really our website, uh, www.bluelagoonresources.com. Uh, there's an email link there. I'm happy to engage uh, with the investors that have any questions, you know, email me uh, and I'll, I'll certainly do my best to get back and, you know, uh, as quickly as I can. Uh, and uh, our tickers are in Canada, BLLG and in the U.S., BLAGF. Beautiful. Thank you so much for coming on this show today. My pleasure. We will have you back very soon to watch this ride straight through the summer and into early next year. It's going to be incredible. Mr. Raina Vig, founder and CEO of Blue Lagoon Resources. For the CEO's Open Discussions Corner, I'm Michelle Holliday at PortfolioWealthGlobal.com. 